Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. My name's Mike with Last Line of Defense. A lot of you guys know, some of you might not, that I've had a holster company for the last five-ish years. I've sold thousands and thousands of holsters, and I have never done a holster video on my holsters. Shameful, I know. I've had a YouTube channel this whole time and a holster company this whole time, and I've never done a video. So I apologize, but a lot of you guys own my holsters out there. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments down below if you love them or whatever, some things you like or some things you hate. If you hate it, definitely reach out to me and I'll, I'll get you squared away. I don't hear a lot of negative feedback ever. But if you do have something negative to say, I've, I'd love to hear it. Uh, shoot me an email and I'll get you squared away. But yeah, comment down below, let me know. Uh, but holster video, I've never done a holster video because my sales have always been just at the high end of what I can handle. It started as a very, very side project. I was just making like a couple holsters a week or whatever, and then it kind of grew and I kind of had to hire contractors to help me out. Um, and it's always been growing, so I've never done any marketing, I've never sent holsters out to gear review channels, I've never bought ads, and I've never myself done a holster video, but I feel bad because I get questions and emails and what's this and why don't you do that and can you give me some tips on that? And this is the video that's gonna cover all that stuff. So I'll annotate some timestamps or something somewhere around. So if you're just looking for a specific feature, if you have a specific question, hopefully these timestamps will help you out. This is a little bit weird because it's also the first video on my B channel. So get subscribed. If you're watching this video, you might not be subscribed yet. So get subscribed. Through the years, I've done all kinds of stuff. I've always been a gear channel, but a, a, an aspect of my channel has been guns on my main channel, my last line of defense channel. But I've always been into preparedness and survival and gear and tools and EDC and bags and pants and uh, more recently, I guess, bug out rigs and overlanding. Uh, and I found that some people just want gun content. They just, just, just want gun content and they don't care about anything else. So to make it easy for everyone, this channel is only gonna be gun content. So starting it off with gun related stuff, my holsters. So kind of, that's what the video is gonna be about. But the future of this channel is gonna be a lot of gun stuff. So get subscribed. Okay, so holsters, I'm not gonna give a big backstory, but maybe I will in the future. Let me know if you wanna hear kind of how I started the holster company, why I started it, the process, CNC stuff. I was gonna show a little bit, like I do all my CAD in-house, actually my brother does, and then we CNC it out of HDPE and then vacuum form, and my processes are pretty dialed now, but this video is not gonna to get too into that, but if you want a video of kind of the history of the holster company and how I operate and how I do things now, let me know down below, and that may find a place uh, on this channel. Years and years ago, seven years ago, I started wanting a better holster. There weren't a ton of holster options back then. Now there are. Everyone with a garage is making holsters, but back then uh, they didn't, there just weren't many holsters out there, many good holsters at least. And so I was like, I could probably figure this out. So I watched a couple YouTube videos, bought some stuff and started making my own holsters, which is where I developed the Gun Plus Mag holsters. I was the first person that I know about. I'm sure there was other garage builders building them, but I have a couple other holster manufacturers and they tell me that I was the first one that they saw. So maybe I was the first, probably not. But I was making them before they were available to the public that I knew of. So it's a design, the Associate is a design that I've been building and using for many, many, many years. Since then, there's been a lot of other people come to the market. And again, this video isn't saying they copied me at all. They probably didn't because I'm not a well-known holster maker. So they came up with their own designs as well. And now there are a whole lot of options out there for the gun plus mag appendix carry option. I'm gonna talk about some of the features of mine why they exist, because I do have a lot of pretty unique features. Uh, and this is a holster that I built for myself. Everything in my life, I've always just saw a problem, said I could probably make it better, and then I'd do something, tweak it, whatever, or make my own holsters, and then it fits my needs perfectly. So what you're gonna see now is what in my mind is the perfect holster, because I can make and design any holster that I want, this is what I personally carry myself. I don't carry any kind of modified version of this holster. I carry what's essentially directly off the production line. So the holster I carry is gonna be the exact holster that you get, just letting you know. 
All right, so this is an Associate V2. I have the light coming from a little bit of an angle so it casts some shadows so you can kind of see some of the features and the details of these holsters. I'm gonna be handling a lot of guns in this video. They are all cleared. I'm not gonna show that they're all clear before touching every gun. And to show some features, the gun is gonna be pointed at the camera sometimes and I will be kind of flagging my hands and stuff as I'm pointing things out to you. Not necessarily practice I recommend, but it's gonna be hard to show all the features with guns in the holsters without doing that. So one of those things, do as I say, not as I do. But again, all the guns are cleared. Be careful when handling firearms because if you aren't careful, they can be dangerous. So this is a Glock 19, Glock 19 holster, and this is in multicam black front and multicam black rear. What you'll notice up front about my holsters versus a lot of others is I use a single clip. This is a cause for concern for some people. I've been doing it this way for like seven years. I've sold thousands and thousands of holsters. My holsters aren't like noob holsters and they're not cheap holsters. So my audience and my customer base are users that are typically training a lot, that know a lot about firearms, have seeked my holsters out intentionally and are actual real world users, oftentimes very skilled and advanced users. I've never had a complaint. I've never heard of an issue with the single clip not being secure enough. So a lot of people say, you need two clips. Do you though? I've done all kinds of training, rolling around the ground. I live a very active lifestyle. I'm always doing stuff single clip, never once in my life had an issue. The key is a quality clip. But why do I do a single clip, you may ask. You may say, why even do a single clip? And the reason is because it is exponentially more comfortable. When this is in your pants, on your belt, the concern for the single clip is, oh, it's gonna shift around all kinds of crazy and it's gonna be in my pants like this and it's gonna do this and it's gonna do that. It never does, but it does add a ton to the comfort. As you're bending, as you're shifting, as you're leaning over, it will move a little bit with you because it doesn't have two places where it's on your belt rigid, like a shovel that won't move in your pants, super uncomfortable. I've tried two clips, I've done two clips, I hate it. So a single clip is a big key part of why the holster is so comfortable because it does allow it to move and shift with you just a little bit. Here I'm gonna flag myself to show you, but the key here is we have a pretty extreme bend in the holster. This is ergonomic to go to your belly. Yeah, you may say, yeah, I'm fat, yeah, I'm skinny, that that curve isn't gonna work. I would like it a little bit more bent or a little bit more loose or whatever. This curve band, a lot of trial, a lot of research, a lot of feedback has gone in to this specific curve right here. It works very, very well. And the curve, the thing with the gun and the mag and the single clip, it really keeps it in. I mean, every body is a little bit different, but for the most part, our pelvic region has a certain shape to it. Our, our abdomens have a certain shape to it. And where the clip placement is, mixed with the bend in the holster, mixed with these portions back here, really keep the holster upright in your pants. A big help for that is having a solid belt as well though. So you will need a belt to use these holsters. Can you use it without a belt? Yeah, you can, but I wouldn't really recommend it. This really relies on a nice, good belt to kind of keep it in place. Okay, so that's the holster. That's the single clip. That is the key to the comfort of these holsters. Other things you'll realize is there's no excess kydex hanging off. There's no big bulges over here. Another big key to comfort is this is in your pants. Your legs are going up like this, up like this. This is this clip should fall around the 12 o'clock, but we'll get into that a little bit more. What you want here is you want freedom for your legs to pivot here without hitting your holsters. So the wider the holster gets, the more protrusions are down here or over here, the less comfortable the holster is gonna be. So my holster is very minimal and very streamlined. And also the footprint isn't as spread. 
All of that helps with concealability, obviously, but also really, really helps with comfort. A few other features you'll see here is obviously the gun and the mag are one piece. This is one holster. You cannot remove the mag. It is all in there. This is a vacuum form Kydex. What we have here is adjustable retention mag retention. So it'll come shipped at a pretty good retention, but if you want it a little tighter, a little bit looser, you can adjust these. If you are gonna make adjustments, I would suggest using Loctite. I don't use Loctite on any of my holsters, but I do get reports here and there. It's pretty rare, but people lose these pieces because they loosen it up too much or whatever and didn't have Loctite. I sell Loctite on my site for a couple of bucks, these, the little tube I was just showing. So go to llod.us slash holsters and there'll be like a little extras part where I sell screws and bolts and nuts and washers and clips as well as Loctite. So if you want extras or spares or if you wanna pick up some Loctite, if you don't have it, I do sell it. So I'll get you taken care of there. The other thing, the holster will come with some extra hardware here, here and here. You can remove that when you get the holster. I'll go get it in a second. All that is is an alternate clip mount location. So it'll come with the clip mounted here along the slide, which is my and pretty much everyone's preferred location. But my V1 holsters, I, I had some of them that had them mounted here before I was doing all my molds myself and everything. So the hardware I ship here, you can remove it. It's not needed. And that is only secondary hardware. So you can mount the clip there if you really prefer to have it at that location. There are some people that prefer to mount the exact same clip here over here. What you'll see here are the clip has three holes. There are three holes here and there are three holes along the slide. The holes here are inset as you can see so they won't scratch the finish of your slide or anything like that. But there are three holes. It'll come shipped at the kind of standard ride height that I would recommend but if you want a deeper ride height you can move this clip up and use two, you can use any combination of the two holes on the clip and the holster essentially. So you can move it up one position or you can move it down one position. If you wanna use the center slot, you can even cant this clip a little bit. Some people say they like to cant the clip. Um, I keep it straight up and down all the time though. So that's the clip. You'll have adjustable tension here, here, and then you can adjust the clip for ride height as well as cant just a little bit. So those are the areas that you can mess with the holster. So the holster itself, this is a Glock 19. Glocks do have plastic mags. This is a this is a P mag actually, but even Glock factory mags, which I've tried to clear off of the table so people don't freak out, have a big retention point here and they're plastic. So they have click retention and it's nice. Not every gun manufacturer is like that. Most won't have click retention on the mag because they are steel mags and the click retention point will just get worn off very quickly. Um, and a lot of these little mag catch points are very thin, so they just don't work with click retention. So most of the mags that aren't Glocks won't have click retention, but Glock mags will have click retention in the mag holsters. They are oriented this way, which is the standard for every combative, every competitive shooter, everyone. This is the way to go. Don't use your mags this way. You can technically put them in my holster that way if you just really, 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 really want to do it. But as you can see, all my holsters are really designed to have the mags this way. There is a slight cant. You can see it more in the molds here. Uh, there's a little bit of a cant in the mag, but a lot of people think this is straight up and down. Why don't I cant it more? People think it's more ergonomic, it's more whatever, it's more whatever, but it's really not. When you're pulling this mag out, if the mag you could just pull straight up, then this would be more ergonomic, but really you have to pull it out. If it's angled, you have to pull it out this way and then you gotta go back up this way. So this is really quick fast and again we want a small footprint for comfort on the body so i don't have an extreme cant on the mag and that is a very intentional design element so these will work with most of your aftermarket mags and stuff like that uh, they'll work with the 19s the 17s so the 15 round capacities and they will work all the way up to i'll show you in a little bit if you want to go crazy with like a 33 rounder though not necessarily something i would recommend 
all of the non-weapon light holsters will have click retention and most of the weapon light holsters will have click retention as well. So just real quick to show you, this is a 19, Glock 19, and this will work with your 19X, your 45, your G45, not your 45 um, Glock, but your G45 Glock. All the different generations. This is a Glock 26. Will work there, but the Glock 26 obviously doesn't extend the full length. At this time, I don't make a dedicated Glock 26 holster. This is a Glock 34. So by nature, the open-ended will allow longer slides, a 17, a 34, a 17L, comps, threaded barrels, everything like that. So these holsters will all be cut to 19 length, but will work with 26, 34, 17, etc. A quick note on colors, for camos, colors will always be different. The camo will be a random camo pattern. Multicam black, unfortunately, even though it's the sickest color, has the least amount of patterns. So some chunks, and I throw away a lot of multicam black that the pattern just sucks too bad, but some chunks will have more black but every other camo is pretty uniform, but multicam black will have the highest level of variance, one holster to another, and may have large portions of black. Just letting you guys know that. This is the ultra matte. Previously, older multicam was much glossier and the finish wasn't nearly as good. I use the newer stuff, the highest quality stuff you can get. The interior of multicam is kind of this gray foliage green color. So if you get a camouflage color on the back, the back portion touching your skin will be the camel, and the interior color will just be the back side of that kydex. If you get a holster that has camel on the front, the back color will appear as the inside color, but the inside color obviously on the front won't be that. But the back color will be both the visible inside color of the sweat guards and it will be the actual back of the holster. Another element that you'll see in the V2s is this integrated claw wedge feature here. So you'll see a lot of holsters these days with a big dedicated wedge that kind of sticks out and does that kind of thing. I get a fair amount of questions asking why I don't do that. And one of the main reasons is because it doesn't work well with a single clip. The nature of the single clip and how it lends to being so comfortable is that it does allow it to shift as your body shifts. When you're standing up, it'll be straight up. But when you're bent over, when your leg is up, when it's doing this thing, it'll shift just enough to be really comfortable. Um, so this being in line with this allows it to work kind of this minimal integration claw to work with a single clip without getting crazy or anything. But if you have a big one that kind of sticks out like this with a single clip, potentially if you bend something crazy, the clip could fall under your belt line or it could go above your belt line or something like that. And then you can get into issues. Mine allows it to kind of slide and adjust with you. So while this doesn't have quite the full force on the belt as a dedicated clip, it does help a little bit. I do also integrate that into the weapon light variants as well. But again, this is a minimal claw. This isn't anything too crazy. My thoughts and my feelings on claws are, I do think sometimes they can help with concealability. Though people running my holsters, I get a lot of feedback from them switching over from, I'm not gonna name any brands, but some of the more popular brands with uh, dual clips and claws, and they say mine conceal better. It's gonna be different for every person. A claw typically is for concealment. A claw is gonna push against your belt so that the grip of your handgun can push into your body more. That adds discomfort, it adds pain getting the holster on and off. Uh, I don't like them, I, I hate them, but this is kind of an in-between option for me. My concealment comes from minimalism, curve of the body, this um, and just the fit of the holster essentially. So I don't have any big devices that are pushing on you. The other question I get asked about is a wedge on the back. I don't have anything like that. I've, this was like a long time ago. This was probably four years ago. I kind of was experimenting with my first. This was before I was CAD designing and custom CNCing my own molds, but I was experimenting. Then when I moved over to CAD, I experimented again with a variety. I threw away most of them, but I kept a couple of them. So this was a wedge, kind of a, a two axis wedge that both would push the top back into you as well as the grip into you. 
And I sent these out to some friends and some colleagues and overall the feedback, some liked it, the vast majority didn't like it. I actually sold holsters like this for a while and most people just didn't like the wedge, they weren't familiar with it, they didn't know what it did. I personally hated it. I don't like anything pushing on my lower pelvic region um, to add a little bit of concealment and that's arguable at best whether it helps or not. I think overall probably it does help at the cost of comfort. So I said, I'm not gonna do it. So I dropped these entirely. So none of my holsters have wedges on the back. Some people are just die hard wedge people. And to them I say, you know, pick up a holster that has a wedge. There's a lot of great options out there, but they like a lot of the features of my holsters and they DIY a solution. There's tons of articles on there where you cut a foam thing, you cut like a heel cup support for shoes, you do some Velcro thing. So there are my holsters in the wild where people have modified them essentially to run a wedge, but by default they don't run a wedge. I don't like wedges, I don't like claws, I designed these holsters and that's why I have done extensive feedback testing, t and &E, Q and A, and these are the holsters I came up with. So if you're wondering, do you have a claw, do you have a wedge? I don't, I have an integrated claw, and that is the holster. Okay, so concealment, I'm just gonna show you right now, just wearing a regular t-shirt again. I have light coming in at a hard angle, so you can see the shadows and stuff. Uh, obviously you can't see this. This is a very small gun. This is a Glock 43X in one of my holsters. And I'll do a little more details here in a second. And hell, let's go crazy. We'll throw a 33 round mag in here and we'll go for a Glock. 34 with a magwell. So the absolute biggest setup that you can carry. And here we are. Can bend down, can jump around, can move, can high step, can turn, can do this and can do that. Uh, and this is the holster. So Honestly, a very concealable option. Every clothing type and body type is gonna be a little bit different, uh, but this is real world use. If I pull my shirt tight, you can see a little bit more of the details here, but a very concealable holster, even with literally a Glock 34 with a 33 round mag. Hopefully this is giving you guys a good view of what's going on, how it fits. And I'll change shirts here and kind of give you some tips. Like I said earlier, I don't wear undershirts, but if you are a person that wears like more button down shirts or polo shirts or whatever, there is a good option here. This is the Guardian by Vertex. And it basically has a built-in undershirt protection layer, I guess. So this is, you know, help with sweat or abrasion or whatever. Uh, so if you are someone that either currently wears undershirts or thinks you wanna start wearing undershirts, but you're like, oh, but it'll be too hot, these shirts only have it on the bottom section. So up top here, ooh, look at that, no undershirt. It's only at the bottom, so they're specifically for concealed carry. These buttons on the button ones are snap buttons. So if you need to access it, you can snap it open like that. So this is an option for those that are like, I really need to wear an undershirt, but it's too hot, or I live in whatever, blah, 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 blah. I don't use these shirts personally, again, because I don't wear undershirts at all, I don't find the need to, but some people do. So I just wanted to show you a quick option. This is an undershirt. This is like out of a special, like, you know, breathable, moisture wicking, whatever, fancy high-tech fabric. So that is what it is. And then you tuck it into your pants and it provides some protection or whatever from the elements. Okay, back to a t-shirt. Okay, we got a t-shirt tucked into jeans. These jeans are the most comfortable jeans. I'll link them down below. But I just wanna show you what's going on. I'm wearing a belt. This is a Blue Alpha Gear Belt, LLOD edition. I sell this on my site. So if you wanna order it when you order a holster, you can. EDC Hybrid, which means this buckle is smaller and will natively fit through belt loops. Look at that, incredible. So it's a very secure belt. I just love the click. 
easy, super fast, and that's the belt. So you'll get your holster, and on the holster, you can see here, it's got this little, little lip that makes pulling this clip out very easy. So you just pull your pants out, enough room to get the holster in, slide it in, and you're done. You're good to go. Make sure the clip does fully go over the belt. The belts I sell are 1.5 inch. These clips are 1.5 inch. I also sell 1.75 inch clips. So if you use a 1.75 inch belt, you'll wanna get a 1.75 inch clip, but a 1.5 inch clip will typically hold and fasten better on a 1.5 inch or smaller belt. So that's how you get it on, how do you get it off? Same deal, very easy, just lift that so it clears the belt, pull it right out. Probably the fastest holster to put on and off out there, especially one with an extra mag, which is nice. Now, as far as belts go, belt placement, this is how I rock it right here. I use the clip just left of 12 o'clock. So right up above here, you can see this is where my button and everything is falling, right on the left side of the clip. So the clip goes over the belt, left side of this button area, and then my belt buckle is on the left side over here. If you wanna get crazier, you can put your belt buckle over here a little more or over here so you're not sticking out as much on the front. But again, with no wedge, with no crazy wings and clips and claws and whatever, my holster isn't pushing out a ridiculous amount over here. It's very svelte and very streamlined, so I find I can put my buckle right here without being too crazy. Again, this is what it looks like. So some tips, the deeper you carry, so if you want a deeper carry, that's gonna conceal better because all of this stuff kind of falls down lower into your pants, it's gonna be less comfortable. If you're having trouble with comfort, you can either kind of hike your pants up a little bit, you can use <laughs> carry a smaller gun, or you can adjust your belt clip so the gun rides higher. So that is an option as well. I typically like to have it to where it's just enough room to get under here when I'm doing a draw. So if I pull this out, I can draw really easy, really easy, putting it away just as easy. The other feature, which I didn't talk about before, is these little flares here on both the mag and the flare here on the gun. That helps with easier reholstering of both the mag and the gun. So it's not just an aesthetic cue, it is an actual functional element. But when you are putting this in here, if you're new to appendix carry especially, you may wanna mess around with some positions. Maybe you'll find out that carrying a little more to the side is more comfortable for you, or maybe carrying a little more towards the other side is a little more comfortable. You'll need to adjust your belt, and you need to do that kind of stuff to really kind of dial it in for you. These holsters, all holsters, all concealed carry is not a one size fits all approach. So while this holster is the same size, you may need to adjust the ride height. You may need to kind of adjust the cant of the belt clip a little bit because you're like, well, actually, for my body, maybe like this fits a little bit better. I kind of stand like this a lot or whatever. So experiment, find what works for you. Whew, sorry, I didn't intend for this video to get so long, but right now I'm gonna cover some common questions I get asked. I do have a page on my website, llod.us slash FAQ. Go there, I update that with the most common questions that I get asked, so it's a good place to start. I do offer a military law enforcement, I do usually give it to first responders as well, discount. Email me how to get that. You'll email me some credentials. I'll give you a coupon code. That's a question I get asked all the time, but I do offer one. Uh, the other question I get asked is about weapon lights. If I order a holster for a TLR7, which is a great light, the TLR7A is awesome, will I be able to use my holster without the weapon light? Short answer to that is no. A holster for a weapon light Here's one, an older one again. This is the Olight PL Mini 1. It's molded to where the retention is based on the weapon light. There's these big channels and everything like that. So this is based on the weapon light. If you take the weapon light off, 
The host, the gun will still fit in here, but there's no, there's no retention. There's no retention going on with that gun. You could probably tighten it down super tight, and then you may have some type of retention, but it's not what I would recommend, um, and it's not what the holsters are designed for. At the same time, you have a weapon light on here. You order a holster for a gun without a weapon light, it's not gonna fit because it doesn't have those channels built into the holster. So, you either need a holster without a weapon light and you run it without a weapon light, or you need a holster with a weapon light and you run it with a weapon. A quick thing to note is in the drop down selection, when you're selecting things, the description above it changes once you select it. So I have written specific description for every variant possible. So when you select that M&P, read the description for the M&P, and that'll also answer some common questions. A very important thing is when you're ordering, I have a special notes section, and that's just to put whatever, I have this weird optic or these weird sights or la 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 la. But really, if you have something super weird, don't order a holster. Email me, ask me, make sure it'll work, and then order a holster, and then you can put your special notes in there. Special notes really is primarily for sweat guards. So sweat guard is how high this thing comes. By standard, the sweat guard is gonna be about that high. It's a mid height, roughly. Sweat guard, you can get a little higher. This is actually a little bit higher probably. You can get a full sweat guard, which will come all the way to the top. You can get a low sweat guard, which is lower. You can get no sweat guard. I recommend a medium, it's what I run, it's what 95% of people use, and it is what is on there by standard unless you request differently in the special notes section. Then the other question I get asked a lot is I have an RMR, I have this or I have that. All my holsters, for the most part, are designed to work with or without an RMR. So if you have an RMR attached, you'll be good to go. If you take it off, you'll be good to go. But if you are curious, if you have something weird, if you have some weird milling, or if you have a really large optic like the SRO or the Acro or something like that, then definitely email me ahead of time because they will work on some of my holsters and other of my holsters they won't work. Primarily because this piece here on Glocks, the base plate, doesn't stick out a whole lot on Glocks. So it doesn't hit, it doesn't interfere. But on some weapons like the Nem and P, it has a base plate that extends very far. Therefore, an M&P typically, you might run into issues with an SRO. So if you're running something pretty standard, like an RMR, good to go. If you're running something a little weird, shoot me an email. And then there's a lot of questions about color. Can I see this color? Can I see that color? Right above the color selection dropdown, there's a link, and maybe I should make this orange or something so people see it more. It says, see all colors. You click see all colors, and it'll take you to a page and the page is llod.us slash kydex hyphen colors. On that page, I show a picture uh, mostly on my actual holsters of every color under the sun. Again, front color is gonna be the front, back color is gonna be the back against your belly. Will the holster have click retention? For all weapons across the board, if it doesn't have weapon lights, it will have click retention for any gun. The weapon lights also, I try my best to give them click retention, and most of them fresh will have click retention, but the nature of a weapon light and sharp edges and metal rubbing against plastic eventually will probably wear out that click retention over time and tons and tons of draws to where weapon light holsters eventually will just be a friction tension at some point, which is what most holster manufacturers do across the board. I put click retention as often as possible and most of my holsters do have it. I spoke earlier about Mags, for the most part, your Glock mags are gonna be the only ones with click retention because Glock mags are plastic and they have a big old notch and click retention can be done. Most other mags are metal, so they just shave off that retention anyways, or they have really small little notches. So click retention for the most part on magazines is only gonna be on Glock holsters. And then I get a lot of questions about, will this holster work for this gun or whatever? Can I put a Hellcat in a P365 holster? 
mostly no. This question also extends to like P80 Glock frames. Will a P80 fit in your Glock holsters? No, P80 frame is much, much different than the Glock frame is. At the same time, something like the Zev OZ9C will actually fit into a holster. So this is with a TLR7. This is a TLR7 Glock holster. It'll fit that holster, even though the dimensions are different. Without a weapon light, it'll still fit this holster, though you do have to loosen the retention up enough. So across the board, it's kind of different. A P80 will not, but other variants, maybe. It's one of those things where you'll just have to shoot me an email and ask, and if I've tested or somebody else has tested, or if I have the firearm, then I can let you know. But sometimes I just don't know because there's so many guns out there. And then I get asked questions. Can you make a holster for this random one-off gun? Or can you make this custom knife holster? Can you make this custom anything? The answer to that, unfortunately, right now is gonna be no. I'm not doing any custom work at all. If you can select it from the dropdown on my website, I make it. If you cannot, I do not. If it is a very popular gun and it's not in the selection, chances are I know about it and I will probably offer. You can shoot me an email and let me know and you say, hey, not looking for a response or maybe you are, maybe, I, maybe you wanna know like when the Hellcat holster will be available, which I do have plans to make, you can email me. But if you have some random one-off gun, I'm not gonna make a holster for it and I don't do any custom work right now. And then the other question that I touched on earlier, do you make OWB, do you make it without the mag, yada, yada, yada. If it's on the site, I make it. If it's not, I don't. I will be releasing future models that probably fit a lot of other people's needs in the future, but until those are available on the site, you can't buy them. And last but not least, my holsters do have a lifetime warranty, so if they break or are damaged or something, chances are I'll fix it. At the same time, if you ran it over with a car, if you shot it with a gun, or this is an important one, Kydex is a thermo molded material. What that means is to mold it like we mold it, you heat it up. So when you heat up a Kydex holster, it will deform and it will do all kinds of stuff. So don't leave your Kydex holster in Texas in the middle of summer with your windows up on the dashboard because it will deform. So don't do that. Don't leave it out in the sun, though it can probably handle the sun, but once the temperatures get too high, it will start to deform. So don't do that. Also check your screws and stuff here and there. I'm not saying you need to do it every single day. That wouldn't hurt if you did. But screws naturally, again, if you're not using Loctite especially, can just work themselves out over time. I use high quality hardware, and this does have compression fittings, which does try to keep it from moving, but check your stuff because screws inevitably will back out. Oh, I talked about this earlier. Holsters will come with this on there. This you can take off. This is just the hardware to mount the clip here if you want to mount it there. Okay, that's it. As the case with a lot of my videos, this went pretty long. Um, again, future videos are gonna be out shooting and stuff. If you're watching this at a later date, this is during Corona time. My hair is crazy long, that's why I'm wearing a beanie, keep things contained, and I haven't been out. I shoot a lot on public lands and it's been kind of frowned upon to go out. So I've just been waiting until things kind of get back to some semblance of normalcy. But these holsters, you'll see them in action in tons of future videos, uh, and I, I use them. It's, it's all I carry, so you can look for that coming up. Again, get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Thanks for joining me. Shoot me an email at mike at llod.us. That is my personal email that I handle myself, so if you email that, I will answer it. If it's holster related, I will always answer it. If you're asking me like life questions or something, I'll try my best, but no guarantee. But if you have any holster questions, email me and I'll get you squared away. Definitely email me before ordering if you have any confusion or questions or anything like that, and I will get you squared away. All right, thanks for watching. And again, I'd love to hear your comments down below. If you are an LLOD holster owner and user, let me know. Love to hear it. All right, guys, until next time, take care.